So we've been looking at this quotient map towards the end of the previous lecture. And now we shall see another interesting result, which again you'll be able to relate with a known result. But let's just go ahead and see what this interesting result is. So let's consider a linear transformation from a vector space V to a vector space U, All right? And consider a related, not the same, but a related map, only the difference being that this one is a mapping from this vector space, which obviously looks nothing like this vector space, right? Okay, such that when T tilde acts on objects inside this vector space. So what are objects inside this vector space? They are affine sets themselves. So the way to represent affine sets, as we know by now, is this, right? This is given by whatever would have been the result if T had acted on V. So this is, in some sense, what we will call an induced map, right? So this is the original map which we are interested in studying. And in our attempt to do so, we have now cooked up this new map whose domain of definition is completely different. But it maps to the same vector space U as the original map. So because it maps to the same vector space U as the original map, therefore there is absolutely no problem in defining it in, like the, in this manner. Look at this T tilde, it is acting on objects inside this and it is spitting out objects inside wherever TV comes from. Where does TV come from? Naturally TV comes from U. So this also obviously then belongs to U. So there is no uh, confusion about where this object is taking fellows from and where it is getting mapped, where those fellows are getting mapped under the influence of this induced map, right? No doubts about this, this is clear, what, what this new map is doing in terms of the old map, okay? But now look at something interesting. We have to again be sure when we are dealing with objects inside this quotient space, by the way, this is also known as, uh, as we've said yesterday, V quotiented by kernel of T. We can also call it V mod kernel T. In general, V mod U. That's also sometimes uh, the convention, okay? V quotiented by U is also V mod U. That's another name for that vector space. Anyway, so the point is, we have to be sure that when we are taking in different, different Vs, multiple of those Vs map to eventually the same affine set like we have seen, that's the problem. So once again, we have to be sure that for those multiple different ways in which we are referring to the same affine set, this mapping must make sense, which is to say that this must map to the same point in U. So if you choose V1 plus kernel T to be a description of an affine set and your friend chooses V2 plus kernel T to be a description of the same affine set, then after all that same object must get mapped to the same fellow here. Like we did with the quotient map, like we did with everything that we have dealt with in these quotient spaces, we have to ensure that that is indeed the case, right? So, suppose V1 plus kernel T is equal to V2 plus 
kernel t. So, consider t tilde is action on v1 plus kernel t and the difference with the action of t tilde on v2 plus kernel t yeah so because this object is after all the same this must vanish but this by our definition is given by t of v1 minus t of v2 isn't it that because of the linearity of t is nothing but t of v1 minus v2 and what can we say about v1 minus v2 based on this remember if this is true then what do we know about v1 and v2 this is the u or rather here we are calling it u let us say this is the w so then if v1 plus w is equal to v2 plus w then v1 minus v2 the difference thereof that is must belong to w so therefore v1 minus v2 belongs to kernel of t invoking that result what does this lead to 0 right as expected so it does make sense this is a 0 of u right so there is no ambiguity there is no problem with this sort of a definition of the induced map if does not matter what name you are giving what you are calling this affine set by whether you are labeling it with v1 or you are tagging it with v2 as long as you are picking out the same affine set there is no difference in what the induced map does to that affine set they get mapped to identical points in u right so this is of course the first sanity check in any of these operations pertaining to these quotient spaces right so at least this map makes sense that is the first thing we have assured ourselves all right the next claim is the t tilde is linear okay is that obvious do we really need to prove this yeah it's it's defined like this and t is known to be linear right of course you might say you already used this the no uh, but that's okay let's say we don't yet know it's just a mapping from this to this but we now are sure that this is also linear by virtue of the way in which we have defined it right so linearity is checked so the next check is what about the kernel of t tilde yeah what can we say about the kernel of t tilde it means we are looking for that particular affine set which maps to 0 of u that particular affine set or sets which map to 0 of u right so look at t acting on v plus sorry t tilde acting on v plus kernel of t is going to give me this so essentially i am looking for these objects but this is also by my definition equal to t of v yeah which essentially means v belongs to kernel t does it not see this is equal to this by definition 
let us mark that out using colors. This equality holds true because of my definition of the induced map, right. Now I am trying to find out those affine sets which map to 0. So what exactly are those affine sets? Those affine sets are the affine sets that are tagged by Vs. What kind of Vs? The kind of Vs that exactly belong to the kernel of T. But if that V belongs to the kernel of T, then I wonder what indeed is this object, right? This essentially means that V plus kernel T is equal to 0 plus kernel T, is it not? Because V belongs to kernel T, therefore V minus 0 also belongs to kernel T. Therefore, V plus kernel T is the same as this. But what is this object? Is this not the additive identity element sitting in the quotient space, right? So this is equal to the 0 of V mod kernel T, which means what have I shown? I have shown that only objects that correspond to the 0 in my domain, in this case the domain of T tilde happens to be V mod kernel T, which is my quotient space. So only the 0 element in the quotient space when passed through this induced map can produce the 0 in the co-domain of the induced map. But that is the classic definition of injectivity which means that I can now safely answer this question as the 0 of V quotiented by kernel T implying that T tilde is injective, right? It is linear, it is injective, yeah? this new sort of an induced map that I cooked up based on any arbitrary map that I had, any arbitrary linear map, turns out it is linear, it is also injective, right? What else? I'm going to make a claim that And it might seem uh, like something big, but it's really very trivial and straightforward. Look at the definition. Every object that belongs to the image of T has a representation like so. So go ahead and define an affine set by that corresponding V. Call it V plus kernel T. And that object by your very definition, by the way you have defined this induced map, it implies that there will be a pre-image in V mod kernel T, which maps you to any point in the image of T, right? Please ask if there's any doubt about this. Is this clear? Right? Yeah. What I'm saying is that T tilde, the induced map is a surjection between the domain and not the entirety of the image or uh, entirety of the codomain which might be u, but rather within the restriction of u. What restriction of u? The part of u that forms the image of t. So you have v quotiented by kernel t and you have u, right? I'm not saying that this is a surjection on you, all of it, no. I am just looking at the part of you 
that corresponds to image of T that is residing inside you, right? It is a subspace of you. Now, if that part is what I am focusing my attention on and I pick out arbitrary objects from here, that means there must be some V in the vector space V for which T V is equal to this point. So, if I call this point say U, then there exists V such that T V is equal to U. But if there exists V such that T V is equal to U, this also means that there exists V plus kernel T, the affine set, which when passed on as an argument to the induced map also gives me the same U, which means that any object that I pick out in the image of T has a pre-image in this under the map that is T tilde. So, T tilde is a surjection between V quotiented by kernel T that is V mod kernel T and the image of T. And already we have seen before this that V, uh, I mean T tilde is an injection between this and this. So, if it is an injection between V mod kernel T and U, it is also an injection between you know if you if you just think of this small aspect and its pre image whatever that is right that is also an one to one because the whole map is one to one. So, of course, a restriction of that is also going to be a one to one or an injection. So, what am I going to claim with all of this if I stitch them together the final claim is going to be this T tilde is a linear bijection between sorry V quotiented by kernel T and image of T. What do we have the moment we have a linear bijection like so? We have an isomorphism which means that that is just another way of saying that V quotiented by kernel T is isomorphic with the image of T. What does this result remind you of? This is the first isomorphism theorem, yes? It is the rank nullity theorem, is it not? Basically, it is saying you get rid of all the redundancies, whatever T does to the kernel is uninteresting. So, if you just choose to focus on an appropriate, appropriately const constructed vector space, you can basically capture all the non-trivial actions of any linear operator T and this quotient space exactly provides you with that handle, right. If you apply the dimension criteria in case these are finite dimensional, then this is exactly the rank nullity because you see the difference between the dimension of V and the dimension of kernel T is equal to the dimension of the image T which is nothing but rank nullity theorem, right. So, this is the first isomorphism theorem, but we have never invoked anything about dimensions here at all. We have not even gone through any construction of basis or anything if you notice in this entire result. It is just an isomorphism. We have just got any map based on that map by, an un, by a superior understanding if we may call it that of quotient spaces, we have constructed an induced map. And now by invoking the bijection property and checking that it holds for this, this induced map, we can infer about this. So, remember this vector space looks nothing like V, but it helps in capturing the action of T completely apart from what T does to the kernel of T which is nothing interesting it just takes it to 0. But anything that it takes it to some non-zero that is this image of T is completely captured by this right. So, this is where we will bring this discussion on uh, quotient spaces to a close ok and this is where the syllabus for mid sem also ends. What, what we are going to do subsequently is not going to be part of your mid sem, but it will obviously be incredibly important because we are launching into the second part of the syllabus hereafter. 
we haven't invoked anything about dimensions. So this is much deeper than just finite dimensions. We, we are not using dimensions. See, isomorphism may be between vector spaces that are not necessarily finite dimensional, right? But here, nothing like that is being used.